The button. What a what a strange and simple concept, but it has created absolute madness on this server. And let's hope this chap doesn't notice me here. Although I'm actually not here to snipe. I've I've kind of already done that. Look at me! I'm upgraded to orange! Oh my goodness me. We we've got one more rank to go. Red. The hardest one to get of all of them. And the one that is riskiest. Because of course, once it goes past red, the button, it dies. So earlier in the day, I was about to log off and I thought, why don't I just go stand over at the button? And it turned out that Grian was actually standing over there. And I thought, this is potentially going to get me in a little bit of trouble. But this is the game, right? And I've said my strategy is just to keep trying to get the higher belt. And so I stood in front of the button. I kept coming back to the computer. And eventually it ticked up to orange. So when you're listening to these talky over bits, I'm actually probably just standing somewhere in the world waffling away and a certain Iskal wandered by and he thought that I was AFK, but uh, I told him I was just talking to myself. And in a way, that's kind of true. There, there's no one else here right now. It's just me. You're not here. <laughs> So anyway, getting to the point, it seems that Grian never actually noticed me standing there. So I pressed the button, I got the orange rank, and I went on my way. But when I came back to this area, Ren passed by and informed me that he was live streaming. And he actually could have pressed the button, taken the orange rank from us, but he let us have it. So I think we owe him one, as I said right there. We've got to do something nice for our brother Ren, letting us get the orange rank. And it seems that I just can't help myself. I'm a little bit mischievous, me. Just in the area, trying to cause trouble. Oh no, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> I thought I'd just stand here for a bit while I'm editing. Oh, it's Tango. It's Tango. Look at that Tash. Look at that Tash. He looks like an evil supervillain. This it's, is just hilarious. I am uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to cause trouble over here, but I couldn't lure, lure Impulse over here. Oh, this is this is just too much fun. It's it's ridiculous. You know, I had a little time to come on and and play, you know, actually play Minecraft. <laughs> and all I've been doing is editing and standing over here. And now I put Green in there. Oh, now he's a little lower. Yes. <laughs> Oh. And before we get stuck in with this episode, I just wanted to mention that a recap of the first 10 episodes of this series has been uploaded to my second channel. So if you like the sound of that, you want to get a little refresher on all the adventures we've had, then there's a link in the screen and in the description box down below. So that was a rather big distraction from a rather big project we're supposed to be working on. And if this landing bay here looks familiar, well, I tell you, it's not one you've seen before. It's not that one over there, or the, some of the others that we've built. It's a brand new one. And can you tell where it is? It is right where our creeper farms are. And of course, one of the things we want to do in this jungle is make all of our projects look fantastic. And those big old ugly boxes of stone bricks that the creeper farms residing have just been in there for too long. As you can see, I started some work renovating the bases of these, but there is so much more to be done and this area obviously includes a landing bay in the middle of it, which is going to be connected up to the two towers. This is also the AFK spot for the farm, so either player will come over here and just stand in the middle if I want to farm creepers, which, you know, I might be doing right now. And so I've already spent a lot of time on this project just gathering resources. Look at all of this. It's been absolutely crazy, but I've been working around the clock to get all of these materials together, and this should be enough for us to complete the two towers on either side. And so I got to work down here at the base of the jungle, putting in our foundational support pillars. And this involved ripping out some trees in the area as well, because of course they're in the way of the structure. But doing this, I kind of realized I had started to build it wrong. So we have this ridge around here, which is where the real tower starts going upwards. So this bottom part is like a support base. And now I realize, yep, I wasted loads of bone blocks. I didn't actually need to change these over here, but luckily we have an abundance of those. 
and it's down the bottom here that I realized that these aren't supposed to be here on this side there's going to be one in each of the corners and then a row of them across the back and so around on this side I was about to put them into place and I kind of remembered hang on a minute this is where we have this alternative design so once again we're going to be going with lots of white concrete and unfortunately the way this design looks over here it's just a little too close to the ground for it to look cool so I'm going to clear up some of these leaves and the trees that are nearby and we're going to build it again on the other side also I do not want vines spreading up and down here because once you've got a bunch of them spreading they get more and more difficult to remove speaking of which ah oh, they're on the bone blocks they'll spread everywhere well I'm glad I noticed it now and not later I have really been enjoying my building and I'm so looking forward to this but I kind of realized that it's yet to look epic it's like gonna get there but this is what I was talking about. So originally I had those stone pillars coming down and then I changed it over to white concrete which is actually going to feature heavily in the building above and it's kind of like the shape of that bleeds down and creates these little hanging fangs or something along those lines. All of that has now been mirrored over on this side and at this point in time it looks kind of peculiar right but once the building is fully built the scale and proportions will make total sense. And what I want to shift our attention to now is the landing bay over my shoulder. So currently it's floating in midair and it's not going to stay that way. We're actually going to build an arc that goes between the two buildings and holds it here in the middle. That was just a miniature time lapse my friends preparing you for a bigger one because we got a lot more building to do on either side here this thing is so cool right I was a little unsure about it but I showed it on a live stream and so many people loved it that I decided to go ahead and build it and I think that was a great idea a little bit of context as to what I just said by the way I had already built everything you see here in a creative world that's how I do my building I need to kind of build it all in creative first then come to survival and actually put it into the world because I go through so many iterations and changes that on a scale like this it's just really not possible to do this in survival and so looking at a build in a creative world and moving it over to a survival one you are going to miss some things right and I've missed some blocks over here on the underside which is actually kind of important because it finishes off the curve right yeah, you can see it better from just over here. So just a few more blocks to place and then we are going to jump into one epic, mega, massive time lapse.
What can I say my friends, it is so satisfying to see this project here in the world. It's been sitting in a creative world for ages and I've been wanting to bring it in here. And you know what, it's a huge grind but it's totally worth it. This thing looks fantastic, such a crazy design. Once again taking the concept we've done already and messing about with it basically and just trying out different things. Now there are two things I want to point out. First of all, the roofs here are not finished. I've got a little bit of a placeholder concept to put on this flat top. But one day I might come over here and actually make these towers taller. I'm not sure if I really like them being flat. The other thing is the use of slime blocks. So we have been powering our base by honey, right? But creepers are green. So I put slime blocks through the middle here with glowstone behind so at night it illuminates and what we're gonna do is build a little bit of a slime block crystal on top so it's sort of similar to our iron farm we had a giant honey crystal sticking out the top of it and I kind of toyed around with using a similar shape for this project but then I ended up starting messing around with the idea of just having a, a smaller crystal sort of built into this space and we would throw in random blocks like this to help give it a little bit more distinction than just being a bunch of slime blocks. So each level here I'm just kind of randomizing the blocks by throwing them down like that and then we're going to make sure that each one of these is covered on each side by a little bit of slime. And I'll tell you, move, moving around on these slime blocks is annoying and distracting. It seems to like set off your elytra and make you wibble wobble down and up and around and ugh, super annoying. Anyway. Here we go, that's kind of... Uh, what am I... See what I'm talking about? <laughs> Come on, there we go. Just want to place a block there. So, admittedly, it doesn't really have that sort of crystal shape. That's probably because I just haven't built this up enough. But at this point, I just want to read feedback on this whole design, what you think about building this at the top, and then probably on a live stream, this will be something that I take care of and, and finish up. And here it is as night comes around. Wow, the light sources down the bottom look really great. You don't see too much of it for the slime blocks here. And just below me, yeah, the honey is all illuminated as well. Ooh, this thing looks fantastic actually. The lights are kind of like all in the right places. You know, Corrales is just over here. Look, this is his base. And there's mine. And if you're in the right spot, you can kind of see both at the same time, which is really cool. Oh, and you can also see Efo over here off in the distance. <laughs> but anyway, well, speaking of Efo, we're going to be heading out of this area and checking out a new shop in the shopping district. Problem is, I'm getting a little bit diamond poor. I'm down to 48. So I had a little rummage for all of my chests and I found some diamond blocks. Uh, I mean diamond ore blocks, right? Anyway, let's fortune these. So my friends, we are looking for a new shop in this area. There was a little island, like a little mushroom island off of the shore. And uh, here it is right here. This is Shade Ease. And I'm spinning around to slow myself down. What a crazy cool looking build. There is also this giant square up in the sky. This is actually ice. And that's a pretty good choice for making shadows below because it's transparent and it kind of blends in with the sky just a little bit. It doesn't look too obnoxious. Very cool stuff. Anyway, as we come back down again, let's just appreciate this build. <laughs> it's really, really cool. I like it. And uh, it's it's got something for sale. I'm not entirely sure what it is for sale, but there's... Hey! <laughs> So it's a subscription store, but I don't think anything is actually available yet. However, there is a grand opening raffle. So what you do is you go and you put your name into here. And if you win, if you're drawn at random, you can win a lifetime supply of free glass. That sounds great. I don't think I need a lot, but, you know, lifetime supply. Also, who is example? Is there a new hermit on the server I'm unaware of? Okay, that might have been the worst joke ever, but uh, <laughs> this door's cool as well. Look, it's Shade Ease. Shade Ease. I love it. Very cool. Let's also do a quick profit check over here. Since we've spent some diamonds, let's see how much we've made back. Five diamonds for the ink sacks. Oh, more diamonds for the bones. And no one is buying any of my honey goods. Oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs>
And we can't forget about the rock shop. We've actually made our first sale of these types of stone. It's only the granite and the durite that's been shifted, but... And a bunch from durite as well. We have also sold out all of our stone supply. I need to do more digging. We need to restock. Look at this. Diamonds have rolled in at last. Uh, there's also a random ender chest here. I think maybe a customer might have left that behind. Let's actually put it down over here. I think it's a good idea to have an ender chest available in a shop, right? So I had some stone lying around, so I've been able to restock this, but I've just been scratching my head and thinking where I might have a big stash of stone, and it's pretty obvious, right? What have we been doing in the last couple of episodes? We're digging out in here. And I wasn't really ready to show much of this yet, but progress has been happening in here. I've been chopping down an extraordinary amount of oak trees, and I've also been putting in some of the decorations that are going to really tie the theme in here together. And so this thing is expanding, like really expanding. It's going to go all the way over to that wall over there. But anyway, it's just downstairs here that we have, yeah, a bunch of chests from where we were digging out. Aha, look at that. We've got some stone. Yep, yeah, we've got some andesite as well. This is excellent. So there we go. We are now fully stocked once again. I think I'm going to chuck the rest of this in our furnace system. So getting back to the build, it's pretty much done and now ready for me and Corrales to move in and sell stock. This view right here is gorgeous though, I love it. So all the elements have come together, we got our windows, we got the platform up the top and the iron support struts going underneath, it's all looking fantastic. Over here at the entrance, we're definitely going to need some furnishings around here, but we'll probably have a sign that says that this bit right here leads to a sort of behind the scenes how the concrete is made. I've got some cool ideas to make some pointless redstone contraptions that move blocks around and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that idea when I'm ready to explore it. But just moving around up here, you'll see that all the pieces have kind of now been put together. There's not too much more to do. I think the lighting is going to be temporary as I kind of envision these shelves and stacks on the walls where the stock will be stored and sold. But for the most part, you know, all the things are in place. And if we ever need more space in here, we can expand up into this area as well. But for now, I am so happy with how this has turned out. It looks amazing. Wait, where are you? Hi. Hi. How did you get up there? <laughs> <laughs> I flew, man. Oh, you flew. I just saw I just saw particles and then it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you literally have two sets of wings, my friend. Uh, don't you have two sets of wings? Nah, you got wings you know on your skin. Oh, I've got a coat on at the moment. Look at me. This is because I'm special. And do you I'm have beautiful. a belt? Oh, yeah, I do. A yellow oh. one. Okay. Are you? So, you, you know... You're, you're inferior is what you're saying. I'm, I'm orange. Hey, yeah. <gasps> but but have you seen the green club? They're an amazing dude. Oh, I don't know. Clubhouses. I don't know. I think they've got an inferiority complex, you know? Like, they can't get higher than green. Yeah. They're making out it's all the rank to be. Oh, they're playing it up, dude. They're playing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Tango's How? video and they just had profits, profits, profits. Especially from the concrete, right? And I'm thinking, how? how is this? We sell it at the same price. So what we got to do is you know undercut what? them, right? But, but, but how are we supposed to compete with this? Be shwammy. Well, here's my idea. Here's my idea. Let's head out uh -huh. of here. Oh, lag go, machine. Go, go. Oh, stop, 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 So we've had so very little sales over here. In fact, we've made 10 diamonds. So Ooh. five diamonds each. That's That's all we've made. That's it. Nothing else. Is it? Is that all? That's it. Just five diamonds. Why don't we make it so that these guys out here are like cheap stocks. So you come over here and everything's one diamond, but it's limited stock. Like if you go for yellow, it's half price, but there's only a little bit of it. Does that make sense? Be sure me. Yeah. You're the brains in this operation. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is actually great. <laughs> Just swear me. It's all right, isn't it? This. It is. Got a oh, vibe. dude, we're gonna keep the the colors in here, right? Uh, the oh yeah, definitely. Like, oh yeah, that looks so nice. Oh man. What? Yep, <laughs> I'm fine. Don't worry. What I have you it. done? <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck, man. 
<laughs> and this skin as well. Oh, <laughs> looks so good. I love this. You know what? This looks really nice. This is like <laughs> this. I kind of get gives you get, gives you the industrial feel having the the ceiling over here. Fish whammy. Hello. Stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Like next episode, it's all gonna be done. Like we're gonna we're gonna get there real quick. Grand grand opening. Uh huh. And then we'll have the plan to sort of lure them to the llamas and then bring them inside. Are we moving the llamas? I think we I might even llamas, move right? the llamas. Yeah, the llamas might go somewhere else. Yeah, they're kind of out of place there. Is this, is this even our our land? It is right. We yeah, I paid for all of this, dude. <laughs> <sighs> I'm I'm like diamond porkers of this stuff. Like, I'm going to move them over to the entrance. I'm gonna, they're going to be the same arrangement. I'm going to put them, like, somewhere over here. So you get lured in. As you walk to the entrance, you walk past them. So we have a plan to open the concrete shop next episode. And also, I'll be doing a job over in Corallus' base. Look at this place. It is stunning. He's built a farm over in this factory, and he's hired me to build a contraption for him. So we'll be working on that next time as well. As you might have guessed, we're near the end of the episode, so be sure to leave a like if you've enjoyed it. And if you wanted to see that best of Asuma, the first 10 episodes of Season 7 recapped, there's a link to it in the description box down below. By the way, if you keep flying in this direction, you eventually come to the Mushroom Island in the middle. But anyway, this is me wrapping up the episode, so thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.